I recently wrote a guide on my website on how to set up a full network using OpenSense and some various networking hardware. Um, I had a few requests to do a video on it, so I decided because it's a lot of content to actually break it up into a couple different videos and make a series out of it. So in this video, I'm just going to do an overview of all the hardware that I'm going to be using. And, and then I'll go into the subsequent how to configure the uh, router firewall and then the switch and then the wireless access point in future episodes. So let's begin. For some of you, this will be networking 101, but I wanted to show like the hardware that I'm using in my example network. Uh, it's like, like the bare minimum to get a network set up and then you can start plugging devices in and, and getting more deep and advanced as you go. Um, but I think it's useful, um, in my web website I just had a little diagram, but it, it, the nice thing about video is I can actually physically show you how I have the devices plugged in. So in future videos you can refer back to this in the series, you can refer back to this first video and see how, how I have everything actually plugged in so that it'll make sense when you actually go to... Um, when you get to the configuration and you'll get to see like why I'm doing something a certain way maybe. The switch in this access point was actually provided to me by Jason's lab. You can check out his YouTube channel, I'll put a link below. So uh, big thanks for him because now I actually have extra hardware that's not part of my main network that I can actually play with um, that um, I don't have to worry about messing up my network for my family. <laughs> so um, you don't, I don't want to get extra you know, tech support tickets for that. So we'll start with the modem. Uh, you might have a fiber, um, you know, a box, ONT, um, but f for, for my example, I have a cable modem here that I'm not using. And for those who have cable connections, you'd have a coax cable that would just come in, you know, you plug it in to your modem and then you'd have, this would go to your wall jack anywhere in your house where your internet comes in. And then um, we would plug the... There's like a one ethernet port. Most modems only have one ethernet port. Some have multiple, so you can do like link aggregation or whatever. But, um, and sometimes they're, they're, this one's like color coded bright yellow, so it's easy to see which one you need to plug into. Um, so you just click plug into that. It might be labeled WAN or something as well to help you out. But, um, so you just plug it into there and I'm going to be using the VP2410, um, the Protectly VP2410. Um, to actually do my network example, the same as uh, I used in my written guide. Um, I, I was able to use this device to show you um, the example, but this one has four ports on it. Um, some devices are labeled WAN, LAN, optional one, optional two port, but this one only has one through four on it. Um, so I'm gonna use the first port, the one labeled as one for the LAN, to the WAN connection for your internet. So you just plug it into there. Um, and then, um, I, I, in my guide, had a network set up, which is the LAN, uh, that, that does not have any VLANs or anything on it. I have it set up to be my management network, um, just to make it um, a way to get into your device without having to worry about VLANs or anything like that. You can just plug straight in. You can plug a switch into it if you want, if you want to add multiple devices to the network. Um, so I just like to use the, the LAN as my management VLAN, you know, network. Some people like to put them on separate VLANs, which I made note of that in my guide. Um, because if you leave any ports on your switch untagged and it's plugged into that port, any of those untagged ports will have access to your management network, which would be bad if you have untrusted devices on there, right? So as long as you have all your, your ports, you know, configured to VLANs and you don't, you're not plugging anything random into ports that are untagged, you should be okay. Cause we're going to separate these out so that, um, the interfaces, the other interfaces will have only VLAN traffic and the, and the management network will just be one un untagged network. Um, it has to be the default VLAN 1, which is what um, it's the same as like an unmanaged switch, essentially. So um, I'll get into those details later when we actually configure it. But for now, we're going to plug into uh, port 2. Okay. And then on my switch, I'm actually just going to plug into, I don't know, we'll just go to the first port here. All right. So plug it in there. It's hard to do this upside down. But you'll see I'm going to port 2 here and the port 1 in here. Um, and then my example I did, I, I wanted to show, not everybody will want to set up link aggregation, but in my example, I decided to set up link aggregation for the remaining two ports to show you how to actually do some, some more advanced, um, things, um, in case you need that extra bandwidth, you could, you could, in, in, you know, if you have unused ports, you might, you know, you could do it without hopefully too many issues. I know with the one gigabit interfaces, it's nice to have that extra bandwidth. If you have 
two devices transferring, you know, a full gigabit speed, you can actually, you won't be bottlenecking each other. So you can at least have two full one gigabit streams. But you have to keep in mind, which I always mention when I do link aggregation is, even though there's two one gigabit ports that you're linking together, you don't get two gigabits for a single device. You only get, you still only get one gigabit per device. But this allows you to have two devices at one gigabit speed, maxing it out that speed without bottlenecking the other. If you have the Protectly uh, 2420 or other devices that have 2.5 gigabit ports, um, you could actually connect it to a switch that's faster and you might not really need link aggregation because you can still have two devices using, you know, one gigabit devices actually using the full bandwidth without actually needing any extra bandwidth and you still have a little bit of room for overhead, which is nice if you're transferring data across networks. If you're transferring data within networks, then all the all the traffic will be you know contained within that same network, and it doesn't have to be routed across your interfaces. So you'll still have decent throughput within your networks. It's the only you only have to worry about it when you're crossing the network boundaries here. So we'll get into some of that stuff more in detail later. But for now, we're going to connect both of these remaining two ports to the switch, and we're going to configure the switch to be to have link aggregation um, here in the future <coughs> future videos. So ports three and four, I'll connect them both there. I'm gonna connect port three down to, well, let's put it here on the second port. And then I'll put the port four on the third port, All right? So now, as you can see, we have three connections going from the router to the, to the switch. And so this, this will give us, you know, two one gigabit streams, and then we have one port dedicated to the management network. Um, so I, I had someone ask me a question if, uh, when the management network, if you can plug one device in or whatever, um, you can't, the nice thing about this is if you have DHCP enabled on it, you can plug a single device into it to manage your OpenSense box directly, um, or you can plug it into the switch like we're doing, and you can have multiple devices connected to your management network, which is what you want because we're gonna have your router open sense on the management network to, to and then we're going to have the wireless access point on the management network and if you have servers and stuff which i'm not going to show in this video the servers can actually be connected to the management network as well if you have a, a network interface you want to dedicate towards it that's what i do with my you know i have a proxmox server and a TrueNAS server both of those are also on my management network so there's plenty of ports here as long as you leave them untagged and, and you know it's plugged, to, plugged into your network here. All the untagged ports will be going to the first port and then all your VLAN traffic we're gonna to configure to go through to go through the, the third and fourth port with link aggregation. So hopefully that makes sense so far. Um, finally, we have a wireless access point that was provided by Jason, um, which is really nice um, for me to be able to, to test this stuff out. Um, you'll notice on this you'll have there's, this one has two Ethernet ports. Usually one is for to connect it to your switch or your router or whatever to get your network and your power because this, this supports power over Ethernet. So you can actually power the device with one cable, which is really awesome. When you have it mounted to your ceiling, you don't need to run a separate power cord. Um, but this power over Ethernet, um, you can actually, if you have a switch that does power over Ethernet, like this switch does not do power over Ethernet, but if you have one that does power over Ethernet, you can plug it directly into your switch. But if it doesn't, you will need a PoE injector, which I have right here. Um, since I don't have an extra PoE switch, which I have PoE, PoE switches in my um, closet, um, I'm actually just going to use this injector to, to try this out. So the way it works is you plug it, you plug it into the wall power cord, and then there will be two Ethernet ports on it. You won't be able to see it in the video, but the first one here that's actually red, you see, that one actually is the port that contains the power um, and the data Ethernet connection. And the other one is just says LAN on it. So it just means you plug, you'll plug the LAN port into the switch. And then the one that says PoE, which means it has power on it, the power needs to go to the uh, wireless access point. So I just plug this in here. Plug it in. Kind of awkward from this angle. Okay. Um, so when you do that and you plug this into the wall, 
how you know your your data connection comes through the switch to the uh, PoE injector, and then the PoE injector adds power to the one going out. So that way you can get power to your wireless access point. Um, the nice thing about PoE injectors, you can actually keep it close. You know, if your switch is located really far from your access point, you can actually keep the PoE injector in your server closet with your switch instead of having this hanging yeah you know, where your where your wireless access point. You can you can put it on either end, but it really makes sense to put it closer to your switch so you don't have to have these box power boxes hanging out everywhere you have a wireless access point. Unless <clears throat> unless your wireless access point access point's already in the closet, maybe it wouldn't matter. Um, but if you have it out in the open like I do in the main living spaces, you definitely need um, this to be in a server closet. Like I, I mentioned earlier, this one has an, an extra ethernet port on it. Some, uh, some of these are, it's just basically an extra um, wired connection in case you have something near your wireless access point that you wanna plug in. Um, you can plug it into whatever device you need to have ethernet that's nearby. Some people might use them for security cameras or something, you know, something like that where you have wireless access point and kind of off you know, nearby you have a security camera or something, IP security camera and it's easier just to hook it in here instead of running a whole new um, Ethernet connection all the way back to your, you know, your server closet. So that there's actually some maybe good uses for that. You can hook another switch to it or something. You know, there's various purposes that you might want to use that for. But um, so this is kind of the layout we're going to have. This is the bare minimum. We have your internet connection, your modem, and we have a router. Um, some some internet providers might force you to use their router. So some people might have to be forced to use a router behind a router. But um, that gets a little more complicated if you have like if it's like a NAT firewall with it, and then you have another NAT firewall. But but I'm gonna assume that you can just have a modem and then your own router, and then a network switch like this, that's, this one's a managed network switch, so you can get you can do VLANs and those sorts of things. And then a wireless access point that's connected to your switch. These, I prefer wire, you know, dedicated wireless access points if you're going to use an OpenSense, like a box like this with OpenSense or PSN. I hope, um, this helps you see what I'm going to be using and and how I'm going to be configuring it in the future. And then I'm going to go over to the next video. We'll be um, configuring OpenSense on this box. I'm going to do a walkthrough from download to full installation. I'm going to in the next video when I do the installation for this. I'm only I'm going to I'm just going to do the bare minimum to get it running and to get configured to set up VLANs on OpenSense, and then I'll, I'll move over to the switch and set all that stuff up. So I'm trying to do bare minimum configuration and then at the end, I might come back around uh, and highlight a couple different um, plugins or, or other options and stuff you can go to kind of like either harden your box a little bit more or your network, harden your network a little bit more than the default installation. Because by default, all your incoming connections are blocked. So you're, you're secure in that, in that way. But there's, there's some other things you, you can do uh, for intrusion detection and, and other plugins and like, you know, you can, you can harden your DNS lookups and stuff like that a little bit more. So there's there's a lot of other topics we, we could get into afterwards, setting up VPNs and that sort of thing. Um, I might explore a few of those topics. So hopefully by the end, it'll cover basically what I've covered in my full network setup that's on my website, which I'll put a link down for that as well if you like to see a written guide for that, um, in case you found this video before you saw my written guide. Um, but until next time, uh, I hope, uh, Look forward to actually getting into all this and showing how all this will work together.